What a time to be an anime fan. In the past, people were bullied for watching anime and now it's damn near the opposite. Its scale has increased by the tenfold and it's almost inescapable. It's even used by marketing schemes for things like American football which I would have never imagined a couple years ago. But there's still this level of judgment that I just can't seem to get over. Oh, so you're an anime fan. You like uh, Naruto, right? So you're a fan? Yeah, of course I love anime. I mean, I loved Naruto forever. It's what got me into anime in the first place. Uh, okay, okay. So what about this? It's also an anime and pretty popular. Are you still an anime fan? Uh, an an anime? Uh, anime? Oh, you mean like Amine the rapper? <laughs> It tends to be anime fans hating on other anime fans, specifically for watching something that involves either animals or non-heterosexual orientation. It really throws me off for tons of reasons. One, being you're all still a bunch of nerds. Just cause you associate with the quote unquote cooler anime does not make you cooler. And I understand that there's way more younger fans now so they skipped over the generation that was made fun of for liking anime, but it isn't only the young people that I'm hearing this from. And trust me, I get it at times. It's hard to look over aspects in shows like Beastars. Being an animal is a huge part of the plot, and I'm sure that Beastars extends into furry culture. So yeah, I could understand why people would want to skip over it, but then it gets ridiculous when it comes to other anime, like one of MAPPA's best anime about gang wars and cultural differences that you might not have even heard about it, because the main character is gay. So that apparently makes all viewers gay as well. Like, no, that's obviously not how it works. That's only for JoJo fans. But JoJo fans aside, it's ridiculous that we're in 2023 and people are still worried about other people judging them so they just judge others instead. Personally, I couldn't care less what others think of what I watch because at the end of the day, I know who I am. Besides watching anime, I go to the gym 5-6 to six days a week, I work a part-time job, and I'm enrolled in college. I also have these creative endeavors like YouTube. And no, none of that was a flex or trying to prove something. I'm simply stating the facts. Just because I watch obscure anime doesn't mean that I'm an obscure person. Let's look at a real TV show for a second like Breaking Bad. It's universally one of, if not the greatest show of all time. Now, just because I watch the show, does that mean I make crystal meth? Engage in literal slavery? Man, Jesse got done so wrong. <laughs> all right, I'm getting a bit off topic, but I'm hoping that you see how ridiculous this is. Do you really think that watching a show with the gay main character makes you gay? A show with animals as MCs makes you a furry. I mean, if that's how it works, then hold on. equal to the one man of this house. Certainly. But in all seriousness, I hope you see how ridiculous this is. It's one thing to just not watch it yourself because maybe it makes you uncomfortable or maybe you're just not interested. But it's another thing to then hate on people who do watch it or secretly ridicule them the same way that anime fans in general were ridiculed not too long ago. Now you might be wondering, why are you defending these anime so heavily if you don't care what others think? Can't you just go about your day and ignore them? Oh no, are you secretly- Relax. I'm not. The main reason I'm making this video and so passionate about defending these works is because of how slept on some of these works are. And slept on isn't always as simple as people just not tuning in. Because the less people that tune in means the less people interested in making more content like it. And then we get these generic ass romance animes that I'm just tired of. When I know we can be way more creative. Like one of the best anime to ever air, and I mean that with no exaggeration, is Odd Taxi. Oh no, he's a furry, I knew- Shut up. This anime luckily has lots of defense for it. From Giguk to Mother's Basement, these guys are heroes. So I'm just gonna add on to that stockpile because of how much I adore this anime. And even more, how this anime will break every stereotype you have 
on anime that strays from the typical approach. First off, being an animal has absolutely no impact on the plot. It can literally be written off as an artistic choice because every single character in the show is as a real person would be. We follow a bunch of stories through our main character, Otakawa. He's a 41 year old tax driver who is relatively antisocial, but engages in conversations through his taxi. But as you can see, my man is barely engaged. But soon enough, there's a case of a missing girl, and not only are the police involved, but so are the Yakuza. We follow different perspectives, and for you One Piece fans, it even has a character voiced by the one and only Kape Yamaguchi, who voices Usopp. From the mystery of the schoolgirl to full-on episodes exploring the downfall of an individual who became an outcast to his peers, the story expands, but at the same time, it's all connected. Everything, and I mean everything, happens for a reason in this anime. Otakawa is our centerpiece, but we're introduced to tons of interesting characters through this mystery. A corrupt cop, a chronically online fiend, and a comedic duo trying to stay together. All in the matter of only 13 episodes, the story unravels. People get shot, things are revealed, and it all comes together like the perfect puzzle. So even if you were the judgmental person I described earlier, which I first of all commend you for making it this far into the video, just give Odd Taxi a chance. If you don't like it after watching it, then fair enough, you gave it a chance, that's all I'm asking for. I just want more people to give lesser known but great projects a chance. Given Odd Taxi was not a small production, it had big backing and I think was really popular in Japan when it first aired, I still very rarely see projects like it. And I don't just mean the animals as the characters, but in a sense that it strayed from any typical anime. The same way that Ranking of Kings or Made in Abyss have these extremely friendly outlooks. Like my mom definitely thinks that I'm watching 5 year old cartoons or Coco Melon or something. But the point is, the outlook is part of the trick. Some of these anime are darker than most I've seen. Despite the outlook, they're actually more complex and explore topics that I rarely see explored. Luckily, there are works like Heavenly Delusion, which just aired this season, and they take a different approach and execute it well. It's not just being different for the sake of being different, but using that aspect of difference. Like a non-linear plot, or the appearance of characters to engage us as the audience and lead us in a certain direction. And I just love anime like that, and need as many as companies can make because it's the power of the medium. Animation isn't like live action, there's levels to it. And the more creative we get, the better the content is. So again, I say that I couldn't care less what people assume based off of the shows I watch. But, if you're actually hearing me out, just give Attack a chance. Open your mind a little and trust me, your mind will thank you for that.